This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I've been meaning to make a video on the Pixel 5 for quite a while now, since I actually got the phone, but I just, I just never got around to doing it. And now, many months into the life of this phone, I realized that the reason I haven't talked about it is because of the Pixel 5 itself. Let me explain. This is the Pixel 4a, and I think it's a culmination of everything Google is doing right with the Pixel line. In fact, the entire A series that Google makes is a home run. I've been using the Pixel Buds A, which Google just sent out for me to try out, and I'm loving them. I mean, for a budget pair of headphones, they are excellent and give you all the great features. And that same thing goes for the A line of phones. They give you all the necessary features without a lot of the fluff, so you can keep that price down. You get a great camera, you get excellent software and you get that great price. So it's really an excellent package that a lot of people really seem to enjoy and that's why the Pixel A series really seems to sell well. I've actually been hoping that Google would release the Pixel 5a, although it seems like that is a little bit on shaky grounds, it may not be happening. But either way, even if you go for the 4a, which has been out for quite a while now, you are getting an excellent device. And like I said, anything in the A series is a home run. And that brings us to the Pixel 5, and also why it seems to just be so underwhelming this time around. It seems like it's kind of the forgotten phone in the entire phone landscape. Don't get me wrong, this phone is still great, and like I said, I use it on a regular basis. This is my go-to Android phone, and it's because it's a phone that does things the way I like it. The camera is still one of the best on the market. Google has really nailed their processing, and with the regular camera and the ultra-wide camera, you get a pretty decent combination of hardware that goes with that excellent software. I use this kind of as a camera phone. A lot of the times I would take it with me so I can get some excellent shots, but I will say that the flaws of the camera have really shown themselves this year, apart from the other years that the Pixel has been a thing. So when the Pixel first came out, the camera was excellent and everyone loved it. And now the competition has really caught up to that. And because the Pixel 5 doesn't have every single bell and whistle, so it only has two cameras, it doesn't shoot the best video, like you really start to notice that when you're coming from other devices. But even still, I mean, the photos that I get with this camera are great and I really enjoy shooting with it. And most of all, it's just like, I know if I take a photo with the Pixel, it's going to be some version of good. I'm not gonna be disappointed with the processing and the image that I get. And another really big reason why I use the Pixel is because of the software experience. I am someone who likes the kind of simplicity and stockness of what Google has to offer with the Pixel. I don't need all the bells and whistles. I'm just not that kind of user. I use the phone pretty basically, and I like what Google has to offer. I like the design, I like the fluidity. Pair that with the 90 hertz screen, which is very fluid and the screen quality is great, and the simple hardware, which is something that I actually like. Yeah, it's utilitarian and not the most flashy out there, but I. I can appreciate that. Those are really great things about the Pixel 5, but when you look at it, you start to kind of see why this phone isn't selling as well as Google might hope. I mean, they said they were only hoping to sell a million devices. That is not much in the smartphone landscape, especially if you're Google. I mean, if you're a small manufacturer, sure, but Google makes Android and they're only expecting to sell a million phones. That just doesn't seem right. And I think when you compare the 5 and the 4A, you kind of start to see why it might not be selling that well. I mean, the fundamentals are essentially the same. You get the great camera with that processing, which is basically the same on both cameras. You get essentially the same software. I mean, the fundamentals are there and the Pixel 5 isn't offering all that much to incentivize you to get that over not only any other phone, but even Google's own 4A. Overall, I mean, the Pixel 5 just isn't offering all that much compelling in 2021. But I do think that's about to change, or at least Google can change it. All right, real quick before we continue, I wanna thank this video sponsor, Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for anything in the creative field. So, illustration, photography, design, videography, I mean, anything you could think of that involves creativity, Skillshare has a class for you. And most importantly, to me at least, is that Skillshare offers classes for anyone. So whether or not you're an expert who knows a lot of things, I just wanna see if there's something you've never heard before, or you're just starting, you wanna dabble, see if it's something that you're interested in, Skillshare offers classes that will suit you. So you don't have to be intimidated going in. 
One of my favorite classes right now is from Jessica Cobasi, which is portrait photography. Not something I'm very good at. I like taking pictures of things, but not necessarily people. It's just because I'm not that good at it. So having a class like this is nice to just learn some new tips and tricks to get better at it. And that's the kind of thing that Skillshare offers. So if this is something that you would like to try out, which I think you should, Skillshare offers a premium membership. But for the first 1,000 of you to check the link down in the description, you will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. So you can try all the classes you would like. So if you like to learn something new, check it out and get learning. So according to leaks, this is the Pixel 6, the upcoming Pixel 6 that we haven't had announced yet. Google announces new phones in October, so this phone shouldn't be that far away. But looking at these leaks, this is a huge departure from what Google has been doing in the past. And I think that's exactly what Google needs to do here. I think it shows a shift in the, you know, philosophy of what Google thinks the Pixel is and takes the, you know, mid-range Pixel 5 and really brings it to that flagship territory, at least for what we can see with the leaks. You know, there's not a lot of feature releases or anything like that we see from this, but just from a design standpoint and from the software, it really seems like Google is taking a step up. Now, why does this matter? Should Google even do this? Well, for a long time, I was actually a proponent of not doing that and making the Pixel more affordable. But they tried that. The Pixel 5 is much more affordable compared to a lot of the flagships on the market. And it obviously didn't really work that well. I mean, just think about it. How many Pixels do you see when you're out and about in the real world? I don't know about you, but for me, there's not that many. I can count on one hand how many times I've seen a Pixel in real life. So obviously going that cheaper route didn't really work, but I think there's a chance that if you go for the ultra premium routes and give you something really special, it might actually sell more phones. Here's why. So who actually buys the top tier Pixel phone? To me, I think it's someone that actually knows what the Pixel is, and that is kind of a you know catch 22. It's a double edged sword. The people that know what the Pixel is probably are enthusiasts or at least are you know techie they know things about phone they know what they want so if that's someone who's going to buy the pixel they probably don't want the pixel because the features are lacking compared to everything else on the market i mean you compare an s21 ultra to the pixel 5 i mean there are things i like about each phone but there's no denying that the s21 ultra is a more exciting device so in my opinion, at least the people who would want to buy a Pixel wouldn't want to buy a Pixel because of the lack of excitement and features. But this Pixel 6 looks like it might change that. It might make those enthusiasts really excited about the Pixel again, making that high end phone with a triple camera setup or maybe even more, maybe a quad camera setup, bringing that processing over to all the cameras you could want. Plus having a really unique design that honestly I haven't really seen anywhere before, whether you like it or hate it is one other question but from these the leaks it looks like a really interesting design choice and then and on top of that all the rumors of google's own processor coming this could be a huge deal the white chapel project which is apparently coming to this pixel 6 is basically what apple has done with their a series chips and i mean it's clearly worked out for apple google has that know-how and that ability to create great software so making that with their own hardware where I think could be a really big deal. So all of those rumors of the Pixel 6, I think make a compelling phone. At the very least, one that you should pay attention to and one that you should look for. Now, will this phone actually sell well? That is the question. Why phones don't sell or do sell is such a complicated thing. But having an interesting phone, I think, is the first step. Having a phone people would actually want is a big step in the right direction. And I think Google with the Pixel 6, at least if this is what we're gonna be seeing, they're on the right track. I love the Pixel line. I'm happy that it exists. And even though the Pixel 5 for me, honestly has been a little bit disappointing and just a little meh. I mean, the fact that it seems Google is really trying something with the Pixel 6 has me excited and I just can't wait to see it.